morning, everybody. This is your host, Jordan Tremaine, and welcome to the Perspective Podcast, where we explore new thoughts, connect ideas, and offer perspectives that may change the way you think about a thing or two. And today, we're talking about chasing rainbows. Okay, so hello, everybody. Good morning. How are you doing? How's your day? I hope it's good. And if it's not good, I hope it's real. If anything, more than a good day, I hope you had a real day where you, even if it was the worst day ever, and I hope it wasn't the worst day ever, you got to be you. And you got to show who you are to other people. That could be very scary, and it could also be very dangerous in certain cases. There's a lot of people that have been uh, deaded because they, like was like, this is who I really am. And people were like, nah, that's too much for me. We're going to dead you. So I hope that didn't happen to you. I uh, hope you survived. And I would guess so if you're listening to this podcast. But um, yeah, real people, they uh, they the real ones. So um, anyways, we're talking about uh, chasing rainbows today. And if you haven't heard it, I think there's a, a really good song by TLC. It was one of the few CDs uh, in my mom's collection that I got my hands on when I was a little kid and put into the stereo all the time. That Outcast, The Love Below, that was another good one. But um, TLC, I think the album is called Fan Mail. Anyways, they have this song called Waterfalls. And like, um, pardon me, I'm about to entertain you guys with my super awful karaoke version of this song. But the hook, it goes like, Don't go chasing waterfalls. Please stick to the rivers and the lakes that you used to. And I think that has something to do with the concept today. Um, They're talking about chasing waterfalls, and I think they're saying, you just go listen to the song, I don't want to spoil it. But um, today we're talking about chasing rainbows. And um, if you haven't listened to that song, uh, Waterfalls or Chasing Waterfalls, I forget what it is, that's an excellent song. TLC, love those girls, they... They're they're good. I like them. So uh, check them out if that's uh, something you're into. But uh, some good old 90s music for you. We're going to get into this concept where I had a conversation a long time ago. I think this is still my record conversation. Um, I wanted to hang out with a friend I hadn't seen in a while. And we... Uh, we met and we started talking in the park and then we got hungry. So we went to this restaurant and we still wanted to talk. Um, so we left the restaurant and went to this cafe and we still wanted to talk. And then the cafe closed and then we still wanted to talk. So we were outside of the cafe and we were basically talking from like, I think it was like 11 AM to like 2 AM. It was like this record long conversation. And when we went from place to place, we were like in the same car. So it, uh, it was continuous talking and it was like super interesting. And I think if you're really on it, you're being yourself. Um, shout out to the virtual puzzle pieces podcast that we did. Like if you, or that I did, and I'm saying we, um, if you're really yourself and the other person's really being yourself, you're being honest and sharing and it fits. I think like you build energy from talking to each other. You learn stuff and you want to keep talking. If you're getting exhausted from a conversation, I would argue that there are some elements that don't fit. Maybe people aren't listening and they're trying to push their agenda. Maybe people aren't understanding. Maybe you guys aren't really just vibing. Maybe there's beliefs or value differences. But when it's good, like when I have good conversations, they're like fire and they make my day. Like fire, like in the like emoji term, like, you know, this is this is good, this is fire, but also fire, like, it warms you up, and it stokes who you are, like, it stokes your flames, and you're, like, you want more of it, because it's so good, and that's kind of why I'm doing this podcast, to, like, help stoke those flames in other people, but, um, during this conversation, um, I got what I would call one of the most, like, I called it a, I, I feel like it's a compliment, I feel like, uh, my friend was making a description, um, and it, I took it as a compliment. The more things you take as compliments, the better off you'll feel. So I think you should do that anyways. But I think this was a positive uh, comment or feedback. And it's one of the, the things in my mind that I feel like is one of the most positive things somebody said about me. And he was basically like, uh, like if 
like lots of people are looking for like peace or enlightenment or the good feeling or whatever, whatever. Um, and they go through all these lengths. So they'll spend like a bunch of money to go on some retreat in the mountains or like go on vacation or um, do all this stuff to try and like get there. And they they treat the the goodness or the peace or the fulfillment or the success as like some pot of gold that's like at the end of the rainbow. Um, and he was like, but you, and he was talking to me, um, he was like, it's like you just like wander around and just notice like the good in different places. Um, like you're, there's just gold everywhere in small amounts and I'm not looking for a pot of gold. I just like, oh, look, there's a little piece of gold and pick it up. Oh, there's, and it doesn't matter if it's in the gutter or in a field or at work. And it's like, you just find gold where you find gold. And then you build up your gold and maybe you even get more than a pot of gold by the end. And you don't have to go on this quest and not have any gold until the end. And then maybe you don't even get to the end. Like you have gold the whole time and you just keep getting more gold. Um, so I was like, dude, that's a, that's a heavy compliment. So, uh, thank you. And so we were talking and that I'm, I'm not here to like, uh, pat myself on the back. I'm explaining that because it has a lot to do with the concept I'm trying to explain today, which is basically that. Um, and so I think that story helps because I think when you're talking to people and you're trying to make things relatable, you're trying to teach people things, telling stories or parables or experiences, sharing experiences, not only helps you to connect with other people so that they uh, feel more invested and all that kind of stuff, it really just make stuff more understandable. It's less abstract. You turn it into, hey, it's possible to put this into a human experience. Here's the story of how I did it. And you're like, oh. Like um, like Adam Savage, he's like one, Jamie Heineman and I, uh, Adam Savage are uh, the guys that did that show, The Mythbusters. Um, and uh, Adam Savage said something really awesome that uh, I think is true. And it's helped, it helped me a lot in college where he was like, yeah, if you're having trouble understanding a concept like in your textbook or in a class or something like that, and it's like just hard for you to understand, go look up the first person, the person who invented that concept or the person who first discovered that thing and go like learn about the history of how they discovered it. And when you listen to that story and you hear how it happened, it it can really help you understand math concepts or history concepts and help put it in perspective and give you a how they did it, why they did it, the experiments that make it real. And I think uh, the story of something can really, really help you grasp and connect and integrate it into your mind, like in terms of uh, that lap concept I was building in the previous, in a previous podcast. So um, in terms of chasing rainbows, uh, that's something you can do. I think there's a lot of things you can do. Um, something I've been learning as I've been getting older is the questions that you ask yourself can really lead you down different paths. Like just because you asked a certain question rather than a different question, like you go down this whole different path and you can end up somewhere you didn't expect or that's not the best because you asked the wrong question. And not like there's Yes, there's good questions and bad questions. I'm, I know that is something in my mind. So that'll be a future podcast. But not that you shouldn't ask questions or you should be so overwhelmed about what's the right question that you never ask questions. But I think if you can see over time and learn that maybe one question is more useful or more beneficial in a certain situation, then maybe ask that question first. And the example that I'm using here is I used to ask myself a lot, can I do this? And I used to do a bunch of stuff that would make me exhausted or put me in situations that weren't really good for me because I was like, yes, I can do this. Um, and then I'd try to like force my way through and end up like all beat up in the end, but I did it. And so that's a question that I ask myself less or ask myself second now more. I try to, it's, you know, still got to like change the habit of, you know, muscle memory of asking yourself a certain question that you normally ask yourself. But, uh, the question I try to ask now is, should I do it? And that's kind of changed my whole thinking process because it's not, it's, it's not even a primary can I do it. Most of the stuff I think I can do given enough time or if I really want to do it, but should I do it? Is this good for my other goals? Will this harm me? Will it harm my important relationships? Will it drain my bank account? Will I end up getting my finger cut off? Um, and then it's like that question I think leads has started leading me to a lot better places and it's, 
caused me to have more self-control, which... I know. Self-control is so bleh. But, um, I think I'm in better spaces and I'm more calm. I have less stress in my life, less chaos. Um, in terms, if you've, if you heard the nice verse good podcast I did, there's a, uh, there's a concept of chaos in there, which I think is like double plus bad, um, or double plus ungood. And so, um, yeah, I don't really like chaos in my life, uh, a bunch of it. But, um, in terms of this chasing rainbows thing, if you spend a lot of time trying to find like enlightenment, or fulfillment, or goodness, or peace, or whatever you're looking for. And in this in this podcast, um, I'm calling, like, you lump all that stuff into one concept. I'm going to call it gold. The good stuff that wh- whatever, whatever who you are, everybody's looking for something different, because everybody's an individual, everybody's a unique snowflake, unicorn, you know, put your uh, description of choice in there. But I'm going to call what everybody's looking for gold. And we're looking for gold, and I would imagine that we're trying to get a lot of it. Like, if, I, if I'm looking for happiness, I don't want, like, one microgram or one, one penny's worth of gold. I want, like, you know, a bunch of gold so I can, like, be like a, like a dragon, like, uh, like the dragon in The Hobbit, just, like, sleeping in gold and rubies and all that kind of stuff because then I, like, I'm, like, very secure in my happiness or my success because I have, like, endless oceans of it, and it's great. And I might even be able to share it if I'm not that greedy. But um, we're all looking for gold. And I think it can be attractive to build this idea in your head that um, there's a huge pot of gold somewhere, like at the end of the rainbow. And this, I think, um, at the end of this tale is going to turn into basically the grass is greener on the other side. But... um, while it's true, I think there there may be certain situations where gold is on the other side. Like if you grew up in a place that's super abusive and dangerous and what you think is gold is safety, yeah, you could probably find a pot of that somewhere and it's probably, you know, you just physically relocate yourself to somewhere safer if that's possible. And now it's safe and you got what you wanted and you got a bunch of it. So there are certain cases where looking for a pot of gold is great. I think usually, um, at least in the first world experience I have, because I'm super privileged to live in the United States, um, especially me being African American, like in the the 21st century United States, because living in like the 18th century in the United States as an African American was different. Uh, so yeah, let's, uh, Let's say gold is good. We're looking for it. There are certain special cases where finding a pot of gold is good. But I think most things, especially existential stuff like happiness and success and fulfillment and stuff like that, if we're looking at that type of gold, um, if you're waiting to stumble upon a a big old pile of it, or if you're saying, once I get this job title, I'll, I'll once I once I once I get married, okay, then yeah, maybe uh, once I have kids. Um, once I move out of my parents' house, um, once I get accepted into this college, then if you're like trying to like find this this path, and at the end of the path, once you cross through this threshold, there's going to be gold there, like the end of the rainbow. And sometimes this other stuff, like um, like inner peace or whatever, like I'm going to go to somewhere, I'm going to go on this vacation, and it's going to bring me peace. I'm going to go talk to this guru, or um, I'm going to go. Uh, on a sabbatical or whatever, and I'm going to find inner peace. That can happen. I'm not saying that won't happen and it never happens. That can happen. Um, I think it's kind of risky to say that I'm going to assume that all the good is in one place, and unless it's like buku gold in one place, I'm not going to like look for gold there. It's going to be obvious, and I'm going to know what it when I see it, and then I'm going to be swimming in gold, and it's going to be like, bro, like Midas... King Midas all day. He's the guy when you touch stuff, stuff turns to gold, which uh, sounds awful to me, but um, that kind of thing where there's just gold everywhere. If you're thinking like that, I think that mindset 
where you're looking for the rainbow and you're looking to get to the end of the rainbow so you can get that fulfillment, so you can get that success, so you can get that inner peace, or whatever it is. Uh, I think you kind of like put blinders on because you're, you're like, you're focused on something. And I don't know if you guys ever tried to buy a new car, but if you ever decide you want a certain car or you want a certain color car and you're like, you haven't bought the car yet, it's like, like, let's say I, I want to buy a Corvette. I've decided I'm going to buy a Corvette and I'm going to start looking at Corvettes. It's like all of a sudden there's a bunch of Corvettes out on the street and, um, on the freeway, I see a bunch more like, oh, everybody's buying Corvettes, which is not true. Just my mind is focused on Corvettes, so I see more of them when in the past I saw more, less of them, even though they were still there, but uh, I, was, I was not focused. When you're focused, you, you tend to blot out other things and, and zoom in on what you are focused on. And I think if you do that, uh, there is a risk of missing little pockets of gold here and there where if you're looking for inner peace um or if you're looking for success number one what do those mean like what are you even looking for you're gonna like i know it when i see it um it's gonna be great and i'm gonna be so successful and i'm gonna totally love it and it's gonna be super top notch. Um, maybe, but for me, I, I found in my life, most of the stuff that I value that I've looked for, like success or fulfillment or identity and stuff like that, it never comes in bulk. There's one, every once in a while I get an epiphany, but most of the time it comes piece by piece and I have to work on it incrementally. And it's kind of like the puzzle piece. I was, it, yeah, this is, it, it is puzzle pieces. Like the puzzle piece podcast idea I was talking about where over time you whittle it down. Over time you find a piece here and a piece there. Over time you mold it and you create a masterpiece over time. Um, and that's the pot of gold. It's something you built piece by piece. You, you know, most people, their their savings is something they put a little bit in every month. It's not like... Uh, they, everybody that has money won the lotto. And I know that there's this, this, uh, kind of desire to win the lotto and not necessarily like with a lottery ticket, but like to have some event happen and then you get your pot of gold and now you have a bunch of gold. So you're cool. But most people don't win the lotto. And most of the time there's opportunities here and there to win small lotteries or to build up your own equivalent of the lottery. Like opening a savings account and depositing 10% every month or something like that. And if you do that every month, maybe you never win the lottery, but um, after 10, 20, 30 years, you, you, now you have a good amount of money. And it's the same thing. And I think you can find a little bit of peace here, a little bit of peace there, a little bit of success here, a little bit of success there. And when you do that and you find it in different places, rather than looking for it in one place, trying to win the lottery in one place, I think that... Uh, it really helps not only to be a more stable way to build it, even though it's a more annoying way because it seems slower. Uh, I think it has this hidden benefit of, excuse me, because you got your gold from a bunch of different places, your gold, it changes the idea of what's valuable to you. Like, if you get all your success from one place, if you put all your eggs, your golden eggs, um, in one basket, or you're expecting all your golden eggs to come from one basket, then that could happen. That could possibly happen. But, like, what happens if you drop that basket and all your eggs break? Um, or somebody takes your pot? I think if you find eggs here and there, and um, you keep collecting eggs over time from different places, you have different sources of eggs, so you're safer in that if one go one source goes bad or if one successful venture didn't pan out, you're not a total failure. You have other things you were working on. But also by diversifying your bonds um, or, you know, diversifying whatever, your search, you, you learn different things about what it means to be successful. You learn different things about what it means to have inner peace or whatever you're looking for. You learn different things about the gold you're seeking. And... That can change the whole definition of what gold is to you. And now that you may have a more 
open perspective, a more malleable perspective, a more inclusive perspective, it might actually turn into alchemy where now that I got gold from here and there and there and I had an epiphany in my mind and the idea of success changed to me because I didn't like zoom in on, oh, this is success and when I get a pot of this success, then I'll be successful. Now that I've like collected some from here and I had an experience over there, I found a little bit over there. Oh, my friend gave me a couple of, of, of success gold coins over here and I built my idea a little more or a, like, I've, I built it a little bit of here, a little bit of there and I have a different, more diverse idea of it. It's like, it has the ability to turn other things into gold. It gives you a Midas touch because your idea of success expands. Your idea of peace expands. And other things start becoming gold because it enters the expansion of your concept. And I think ultimately, uh, if you do this enough, it's like it's like the, the old classical idea of America where the streets become paved with gold and there's gold everywhere because you're not like looking for it at the end of the rainbow. You're just, you just have your eyes open. Um, uh, this concept explained in a different way. If this is a little challenging or if it's good, but it doesn't feel like it's connecting or cooking in your head. Uh, cause sometimes if you explain it a certain way, even though it's not a bad explanation, it like, it doesn't click with certain people. Um, that's, that's good. You know, everybody has different stuff going on in their head. They understand different ways. Um, maybe listen to the non list podcast that I did a long time ago. And that kind of speaks to this idea where if you focus, focus, focus too much, you can miss out. Um, but this idea of alchemy where like instead of chasing rainbows and looking for the gold at the end of the rainbow, you just open your eyes and walk around, go on adventures, meet people, and you take the gold that you find. And you're not like, oh, that's not enough gold. I'm looking for a pot of gold. Oh, no, it must be at the end of a rainbow. So that can't be it. Like you're like, oh, it looks like gold. Uh-uh. Yeah. And maybe you might be disappointed. Oh, that was fake gold. That was pirate. Okay. I learned the lesson. Okay. Oh, that this this doesn't give me enough gold for how much effort it takes to to mine it out or whatever whatever so don't do that anymore but you gain experiences you meet people you go on adventures you have a life and you have experiences and memories and also you can do the alchemy thing where um you expand your concept and now more things are gold now before you thought that a job title was the definition of success but um maybe you found that uh, understanding who you are and having confidence is also success. Um, having good relationships is also success. Maybe you keep the job title, like I still feel successful, I have a good job title, but now that you feel you find success or fulfillment in family and success and fulfillment in like your personal growth, like now three things can equal success. You can get gold from three different places and um, it expands your ability to mine gold. And so you start like franchising. And what was once just one Chick-fil-A is now a bunch of Chick-fil-A's. And you're like Shaquille O'Neal, who owns like a bunch of franchises, um, rather than just owning one little mom and pop. And that's it. This mom and pop is the definition. It's the pot. This is my, this is my ticket out of here. This is my winning lottery ticket. This is my golden goose. It's like, nah, man, I got gooses in seven different counties. And one's, one's over in Arizona. And I, even, I don't even know if they got counties in Panama, but I got a goose over there. And they just lay in these eggs. And like, maybe you don't end up with like a million billion dollars from the lottery. But you end up with a good amount of gold. Hopefully, if you if you go out there and try and look enough, um, and you're never guaranteed to get enough gold to satisfy yourself in either case. But I think in this case, because you're changing your perspective, you're opening your mind. I think it's it's helps you do the alchemy and, and turn other things into gold sources. But it also helps you get perspective and say like, yo, what I thought was success maybe really isn't success. And I don't I don't even need I don't even want that. Now that I see it for what it really is and I'm not super focused on it and blotting everything out and defining myself by chasing this rainbow and getting this gold at the end. Like now that I've seen it, it's like I'd have to give up stuff that I really like in order to get that. And it's like, is it worth it or is it a trap? Um I think perspective is it could become its own form of gold or platinum or unobtainium whatever you want to call it uh but it's good stuff i think so i would say keep your eyes open keep a lookout and if you see gold pick it up i don't think you should steal gold from people but uh work with people look for gold if you find a big old pot of it good for you that's dope but i would say if you're looking for gold and you see some pick it up it doesn't matter how much it is 
because it's gold, like it's a penny earned, like a, yeah, a penny earned is a penny saved. If you find something and it's, it's what you're looking for, does it matter how, what the quantity is? I don't think so. Because if you just do that over and over, you'll get closer to the quantity if it's not enough. And if it's too much, then, you know, just take out what you need. So, um, yeah, I still, if you forgot, which, you know, I, I talk a lot. I've, I've been learning that, that I'm, um, if, if you get the motor started and you don't shut it off or you don't give me like signals, like when I'm talking to you that I'm talking too much, I, I can talk, I can exhaust people with how much I talk. So, um. I know that happens sometimes, but I, 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 I said at the beginning of this podcast that song, Don't Go Chasing Waterfalls by TLC is like a dope song. I recommend you check that out. That's kind of like the anthem to this episode. And it's got like a smooth, it's like, I think it's R&B, like a vibe. And then even like the, the music video for it, it's like 90s fashion and there's like, you know, they're like, they're, they're zooming in and doing like, it's a super 90s music video and you're like, yeah, I don't know. I like a 90s aesthetic. It's like the perfect type of cheesy to me. So I appreciate it. But um, if you watch it, which I recommend, I hope you appreciate it too. The lyrics and the song, I don't think is cheesy and it has a good lesson if you're looking to learn. Um, so I hope you guys listen to that. I hope you guys listen to the different podcast I was recommending inside of here. Um, Honestly, I think that a lot of the things that I talk about, like when I say perspectal, it's like a different side of the diamond. Like eat the diamond has a bunch of different sides. You cut it and polish it and all that stuff. But a lot of times it's the same diamond and I'm just turning it and looking at different sides. So as I do more podcasts, there's going to be more connections. Um, and so I don't think these go in any particular order except for series. So you can listen to them whatever order. But um I think it's cool to get the different sides of the diamond because then you can appreciate more of what the diamond is as you get more and more sides. So uh, this has been the Perspectal Podcast episode on Chasing Rainbows. I hope this turns into a good conversation. I hope this uh, helps you to find more gold and to expand what you define as gold. It helps you in some way. And um, yeah, maybe it'll turn into a conversation for you down the road. Anyways, this has been Jordan Tremaine with the Perspective Podcast, and I hope you have a great rest of your day, wherever you're at. Also, I didn't realize this at the time, but in the beginning of this podcast, I was saying as a little kid, I was listening to the TLC fan mail uh, album and the uh, the Outcast album, The Love Below, which is like the one half of the, uh, the other half is speaker box. But... Um, Inside of that Outcast album, I just realized a song actually relates to what we're talking about now. So let's let's make a lap. Shout out to the lap podcast that I did, um, and a connection, and to help you guys understand, this song is a little more explicit than the Waterfall song. The song is Roses, but in terms of like, maybe you'll understand um, that you your idea of success isn't really successful once you get there. Maybe it's it's not what you thought it was, like all the glitters ain't gold. That's a Smash Mouth song. But um, in terms of that that uh, Outcast song, uh, it's like, and again with my bad karaoke stuff, I know you like to think you don't stink, but lean a little bit closer, see, roses really smell like poo, poo, poo. Yeah, roses really smell like poo, poo, poo. And it says that twice. But um, that song talks about uh, kind of the other, uh, it's like it's a warning, just like the Waterfall song. Um, and I say listen to that song too. And it's great. Another song from that era. I love that era. But uh, yeah, that was just a little bonus I want to throw in there. Anyways, bye.